Hello everyone, my name is Cenk Squaw, Developer Evangelist at Zero. Welcome to another Community Corner video, where we answer questions directly from our developer community. Getting OWASP 2 authentication flow done is hard, especially if it is your first time. Today, I would like to talk about a few common errors that appears in Zero OWASP 2 flow that have been troubling some developers. Before I delve into different errors, I would like to show you one place where you can get some of these error messages during your front-end testing. On zero OAuth 2 consent flow, if something goes wrong, in this case, the scopes, you'll get, sorry, something went wrong 500 error page. Pay attention to the error message on the screen below. For example, it might say invalid redirect URI or invalid scope or invalid client. This is an important hint as to what went wrong in the OWASP process. All right, time to review all of the error messages. I've ranked them based on how frequently they appear in our support queue. Number one, invalid grant error. This in general translates to invalid refresh tokens and happens only when you're trying to refresh tokens. The most likely cause is the refresh token you're using is either invalid, expired, or has been previously used. If zero user revoked the token by disconnecting your application on the connected app screen, this error will also get created. The easiest way to resolve this error is to simply reauthorize the zero organization for your application. As refresh token lasts for 60 days or until used, it may be that your application is attempting to use a previously used token. We will suggest you to add a token logging mechanism to log each of the token your app is using to refresh. This way you know exactly which token is used each time and see if it is correct. If you face this issue only for some of your refreshes, but not all of your refreshes, we suggest you take a closer look at your refresh token logic to see if it is working in a robust way. Each time you refresh your access token, you also get a new refresh token. Be sure to store both. Don't discard the previous tokens until you're sure the new tokens are absolutely working. There is a 30 minutes grace period after you refresh the refresh token. So apps can retry refreshes during this grace period. Another reason for this error is quite rare and only happens when you're in development. After initial OWASP 2 redirection, Zero will return you the authorization code. You'll need to use the code to request for an access token and a refresh token. If you hold on to the code for too long before requesting an access token, you'll get the invalid grant error. This is because every code we return expires in five minutes. It is unlikely to happen if you have already completed your OWASP 2 development successfully. Number two, invalid request error. It means some sort of bad request is sent. For example, missing the redirect URI in the request or missing scopes parameters altogether. If you get this, check to see if the full redirect URI sent by your application complies with our OWASP 2 rules in our documentation. We expect all of the headers on the initial request. You can easily find the redirect URL actually being sent by your application by using the network utility on the browser's developer tools. Number three, invalid client error. It means a bad client ID and or bad client secret is used. You also get this if you don't include them entirely. Check if you have copied the right ID and secret from developer.zero.com. I too have made this mistake previously by accidentally adding a space at the end of my client ID. It took me a good two hours to figure out. Number three, invalid scope. In this case, Zero has detected some bad scopes in the request. It could be a scope that we haven't invented yet. A misspelling of a scope happens to me a few times or a wrongly formatted one. Zero OWASP 2.0 uses space separated format like this. If you use a comma separated or underscore, or dashes, or random string, you'll get an invalid scope error. Number five, invalid redirect URI error. This means a bad redirect URL, or previously called callback URL, is used. In zero OWASP 2, your redirect URI on the developer portal and the one 
your application sends in the initial request has to be the exact same string. Make sure they are identical. Even if there is a slash at the end, will cause this error. I know some OAuth 2 interface will annoyingly add this slash at the end of the redirect URL you configured. Or use the default one if no redirect URL is configured. When that happens, you'll need to go to developer portal to make sure it's aligned. When in doubt, use the browser's developer tool to inspect the redirect URI that is being actually sent to find out if it is the same as you put into the developer portal. Number six, 401 code, unauthorized authentication unsuccessful error. This means the tenant you're trying to use is not authorized or missing, but your access token still works. Every OAuth 2 API call needs two headers to work. One, the access token, two, the tenant ID. If you didn't include the tenant ID header or included the wrong tenant ID, you'll get this 401 error. Number seven, 401 unauthorized token invalid signature error. This means the format of your access token is wrong. In OAuth 2, you must send authorization header in a bare token syntax, like so. Number eight, 403 forbidden authorization unsuccessful error. This means the API connection is no longer authenticated and you can no longer use that access token to fire any APIs. If you're hitting this one, the zero tenant ID header you're using is either incorrect or not authorized. Not authorized could be because of a few reasons. One, the user has revoked your access. Two, the user's permission was changed. If the user who authorized this application got removed from that tenant, then authorization is invalid. If the user remains in the tenant, but their role got changed to a position where they can't authorize any APIs, the authorization is also invalid, so you'll get this error. Three, the tenant is no longer active. This typically happens when a free trial got deleted after so long. The easiest way to check if you lost connection to an organization is to call the connection's endpoint shown here. If the tenant ID is missing from the list, then they're no longer authenticated. So to recap, here's a list of errors and fixes again. I hope the OWASP2 errors explained here can help you to get unstuck and develop your zero integration faster. If none of the above fixes work for you, please let us know by emailing api at zero.com. Thanks for watching this episode of Community Corner. Stay tuned for more.